I'm Temple Grandin. I'm professor of animal science at Colorado State University. This is a large barn full of turkeys uh, ready for market. And we're going to be showing how they load the turkeys. And they kind of, they're going to be herding them like cattle. They go up a conveyor and then uh, show them going through the whole entire process. I am really um, pleased that we've got this opportunity today to um, see this barn full of turkeys and we're going to watch them being loaded onto the trucks tonight and going on through the processing plant. And it's just not possible to bring tour groups to all of these places because of disease requirements. I have to wear these clothes and then I had to be away from all birds for over a week before I was allowed to come here because you got to be really careful not to bring in diseases. These are typical uh, large uh, sheds where turkeys are raised uh, for up to uh, 19, 21 weeks. Uh, today we're going to be loading out uh, from uh, one of these barns. A question that came up was, are the turkeys in the buildings afraid of people? Well, if people regularly walk through the barn and get the turkeys used to people walking through them, they'll come up to you. I mean, I had males displaying to me and showing off to me. Birds that are afraid don't do that. On a really good farm, a person will walk through the entire building, walking through the turkeys, the whole entire building, to inspect for animals that might be sick, animals that might be injured. It gets the birds accustomed to people walking through them. These sheds have curtains on the sides so they can be uh, opened up in summertime to keep the building cool, close them up in the wintertime. Those are the waterers. And when the birds are loaded out, the waterers are left on. It's always important, always have access to water. You can see right here we have a lot of space. They have not started to load out yet. This is a normal stocking. You get into a building that's overstocked, you wouldn't have this amount of space in market-ready birds. They're getting the truck backed up now, and they've got some wood panels uh, set up in kind of a funnel. And then the uh, truck loaders will come in and move small groups of turkeys, similar to moving cattle, up in small groups and they jump on the conveyor, ride up into the conveyor into the truck. What they're doing here is bringing up groups of turkeys, and there's a conveyor in there, and the turkeys ride up the conveyor into the truck. As the birds ride up this conveyor, they remain upright. They will stand on the conveyor as they go up and be loaded into compartments. So this whole entire conveyor can be raised up and down to load the different level compartments on the truck. One of the advantages of using a machine like this is it doesn't get tired. People get tired and these birds are really, really heavy. Notice that there's an operator there and he's controlling this. And then he's got to go back and shut the doors. But I want to emphasize Good equipment makes it easier to have good handling, but you also have to have management. They've got to make sure they operate this equipment correctly. The equipment we have now today is um, such a big advantage over what we used to have. This uh, turkey conveyor is a really big improvement. This is a truck arriving at the um, plant after loading at the farm and a plant employee is going to inspect the load of turkeys to make sure they were loaded correctly, make sure they didn't have trapped wings or other obvious problems. The next step is to weigh the truck with all the birds in it. And then after the birds are unloaded at the plant, the empty truck is weighed so they can get accurate weights. Another really important part of this is record keeping. And the um, plant employee here at the computer is entering the uh, name of the farm, name of the loading crew, time that the load arrived. This is all really important information for tracking down problems. The truck is backed into a holding shed, which is equipped with a big bank of fans. One whole side, it's just solid fans. And it has misters to blow on the birds to keep them cool. It's extremely important not to let them get overheated. In the summertime, the trucks have completely open sides. You've got to have that for ventilation when it's 90, 100 degrees hot Fahrenheit. In the wintertime, the birds would get too cold if they were in open trailers. So fiberglass panels are put into the side of the trailer so that the birds do not get cold. In the summertime, it would be too hot to have the sides of the trailer covered. The um, trailer with the birds in it is pulled into the unloading bay. 
and there's a hydraulic lift and the cage doors are open and the employee moves the turkey into the conveyor that takes it down into the controlled atmosphere stunning. this window you can see in here watch the birds as they get anesthetized one thing that's very important with poultry is you have to have a slow gradual rise of the co2 the pig plant you very quickly put them in at 90 percent you can increase the co2 levels faster than you can for chickens but not as fast as pigs and you have to get that just right to avoid flapping and escape movements uh, trying to get out of the chamber The truck pulls into the unloading bay. The employees are on hydraulic platforms that go up and down. They open up the cages and they pull the birds out and hang them live on the shackles. And they go through what's called a water bath stunner, where their head is immersed in the water and there's electric current passed from their head through the shackle and that will make the bird insensible, electric stunning. In order for electrical stunning to make an animal insensible, it has to cause some epileptiform activity in the brain. When the birds emerge from the stunner, you will have uh, some twitching and movement, but you have to make sure there's no blinking. And when I'm training people to audit electrical stunning, I say go out into the holding shed. I want you to look at the live birds in the holding shed and see what a natural blink looks like. This shows the anesthetized turkeys emerging from the controlled atmosphere stunner. And then the employees will um, place these birds on the shackles. You can see the heads are very limp. They're coming out completely limp. Now, if a turkey was actually fully conscious, he would put his head up like this. That's the position they would be in if they're fully conscious. If the turkey's got a, neck, a long neck, it will, uh, it will curl up like this. The next step, is birds go through an automated bleeding machine. Uh, any bird that missed the automatic cutter would be cut by the backup man because it's absolutely essential that all birds are cut before they go into the scalder because we absolutely have to make sure that live birds never go into the scalder. The birds are now emerging from the uh, scalder, have had their feathers uh, softened up by the scalder. And then the next step is to go into the picking machine, which has a whole lot of rubber fingers that rotate that take off the feathers. There are a few little bits and pieces of feathers still attached and employees on the line will remove those. And then the next step is to put them on a different type of shackle that just um, holds them by the drumsticks uh, because the uh, feet have been removed. And then they go further on down the process where the insides are taken out. The first step in making sure that uh, carcasses stay clean is a hose is used to evacuate uh, feces. It's very important to avoid fecal contamination on the carcass. And then as the turkeys move down the line, the innards are removed in varying steps. And it's really important during these steps to not rupture and break the innards because again, that would contaminate the carcass. Many of these processes are done by hand in turkeys uh, this would be very similar to pork processing plant. In chickens, a lot of these processes are highly, highly automated. But in turkeys, they're bigger, the lines are slower. So these, uh, you know, step-by-step -step process of carefully removing the innards is done by hand. At this point, there is a USDA inspection station where the innards of the bird are inspected. In all types of uh, meat processing, you don't want to waste anything. So all different parts of the animal 
get different uses. At this point, they're cleaning out any remnants that might be left after the innards have been re completely removed. There's an employee that does checks for, um, for carcass defects. This is a really important part of the plant's quality assurance program. Also, it's part of continuous improvement. These sorts of inspections are really important for ensuring quality product. This shows turkeys going into a chiller tank to get chilled. And this particular plant uses a water bath chilling. The turkeys are chilled for five hours. The birds are emerging from the chiller, going to have to be um, rehung back up on the shackles so they can go into, a, into the deboning line and be taken apart. Another really important part of maintaining good animal welfare at the poultry processing plant is auditing. Measuring things like bruises, stunning efficacy, broken wings, damaged legs. Because you manage the things that you measure. So auditing is a really important part of good animal welfare. I get asked all the time, do I eat meat? <laughs> yes, I do. I'll eat turkey, beef, chicken, pork, all of the different animal proteins. And I feel very strongly we got to do things right. If you're interested in more information, you know, lots more information on animal meat plant issues at my website, www.grandon.com.